Good morning, dear friends. It's Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. And yes, almost a full month has come and gone of 2020. We continue in the season of Epiphany. And I'm really happy that this coming weekend, Lord willing, I'll be making my way to uh, Rutland, Vermont. It's been all too long since I've been at All Saints Anglican Church and I look forward to seeing the, the priest in charge, Father Andrew Carlson and the good folk of All Saints. So that's coming up this weekend. Um, I love Epiphany because it's a season in which we think of the light of the gospel shining forth in the world. And what's amazing is that God's primary strategy for shedding the light is through the witness of God's people. That's you and me. Um, and uh, so uh, let's pray uh, the prayer of the third Sunday of Epiphany, a great prayer. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Isn't that a great prayer? Well, thinking of uh, being a witness, one of the passages which uh, is often considered in Epiphany is John chapter 9, which is the account of Jesus healing a man born blind. And as was often the case, it happened to be a Sabbath when this man was healed, and the uh, authorities were furious that this could have happened on a Sabbath. And were trying to kind of intimidate the man who had been healed to say that Jesus must be a sinner if he'd healed on a Sabbath. It says in John 9, 24, so for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. But listen to how the man responded and his witness. He answered, John 9, 25, whether he's a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. John 9, 25, one of the shortest, but most powerful witnesses, a personal witness of this man, uh, which was mightily used, I'm sure. Well, uh, I uh, wanted to tell you that um, this coming evening, uh, the Annick Council will be convening at St. George's Burlington, thanks to the hospitality of Canon Ray David Glenn, the rector, and the good folks of St. George's Burlington will be there this evening and tomorrow. We'll be, we have a number of things, important things to consider. We'll be continuing to, uh, to think about the four areas that the Harvest Task Force laid out for us to work on and we voted on at Synod. Uh, we'll have a discussion on our mission statement. We hope to consider how to continue to strengthen the five priorities in our life that they would become a transformational reality in every congregation. We'll think about succession and transition and a major discussion in the Council on Stewardship starting this evening. So those are things that I'd love a prayer for. But I'd also, you know, as members of this world, we're all touched by the concern for the spread of the coronavirus. Let's pray for China. Let's pray for all who have been touched for healing. Let's pray for a stop of its spread. Uh, let's pray for authorities, medical uh, and governmental, will have decisions to make. And in fact, I'll be sending out as part of a regular series of things to uh, our churches, some areas of how to reduce the risk of infection. I hope that that will be helpful as well. Well, friends, uh, in this season of Epiphany, uh, let's be a people who shed the, uh, the light as we witness. Search the scriptures daily, dear friends, and open your mouth every opportunity you have and speak to people about Jesus. God bless you.